taking a blood sample from this patient so I can harvest his serum and plasma for our blood test. So I'm going to draw from the jugular. Okay, I'm going to wet the area down with alcohol. See the vein a little better. So I've got my purple top tube and my red top tube. These are the two that I need. tube first. I'm just going to pull it in about to the bottom of the tag there. Okay. And I'm going to gently mix that. I'm filling these two tubes. I'm not putting any pressure on the syringe, but just letting the vacutainer pull it in. I'll label these with the patient's name. And then I'm going to let these clot for a few minutes before I centrifuge them to get the serum and plasma down. So I'm just going to set these on the counter and they can clot for about 20 minutes. So our blood tubes have been clotting for about 20 minutes now. So you can kind of see what they look like at this point. There's definitely a clot in here. So what I'm going to do before I centrifuge it, I'm just going to take the lid off of my red top tube, gently rim the clot on the inside, so I'm just kind of breaking it up from the edge of the tube, so that it'll spin down and separate. Okay. I only need to do this in our red top, I don't need to do this in our EDTA, because it's an anticoagulant, it's not going to get a clot in it. Okay, so. Now I can pop these in the centrifuge, and I'm putting a balancing tube across from each of them, so a purple across from the purple, and then a balanced red across from the red. This centrifuge has a set speed, so I'm going to go ahead and start it, and I'll let it spin for about eight minutes, and then I'll come back and I'll be able to harvest the serum and plasma when it's done. So my centrifuge has finished spinning, so I'm going to go ahead and harvest my serum and my plasma now. with my water balancing tube, and then I'll take out my red top tube. So this is my serum. The serum is what we're getting when we let the blood clot and then centrifuge it, um, as compared to the plasma, which is from the anticoagulated blood. So this serum, you can kind of see, um, is what we would call lipemic, when it's got a, a pink tinge and it's a little bit thicker looking. So that's lipemic. That just means that there's the presence of fat in the serum. So we'll still go ahead and harvest this. I'm just going to take the cap off, set it in my rack. And then I have a clear, empty tube with no additive. That's what we'll put our serum into. So I'm just going to use my pipette. And be careful to not get any of the red blood cells at the bottom. And I'm just drawing up the serum. I'm putting it into my clean tube. Okay. The rest of that into my tube also. Okay, 
then I'm going to label this with the patient's name, and then I'm going to mark that it is serum. So that's my serum that we've collected. And next we'll do the same with the plasma. So this is our plasma, also uh, much pinker looking than would be considered normal from the presence of the fat in the blood. So I'll take that cap off and set it in the rack. And I've got another clean tube that I'll put my plasma into. So I'm just going to use my pipette and draw my plasma off of my EDTA tube. Being careful to not draw up the red blood cells with it. And just get the plasma. Okay. I'll put that in my tube. And then I will label this with the patient's name and mark it as plasma. Alright, so those are our two samples. We've got our serum and our plasma right here. And that was how we harvest those. So we just harvested the serum and plasma off of that blood sample that we had. So I'm going to take a moment now to just kind of show you hemolysis and lipemia, what it is we're looking for when we're getting the serum and plasma from the sample. So normal serum, when we're pulling it off of a blood tube, is going to be very much a liquid. It's not going to be at all solid or thick, and it's going to be light, pale yellow to maybe a little bit of a darker yellow. So this is what normal serum would look like. This serum is what we would normally pull off of blood. And then sometimes we'll have we'll pull serum that is uh, hemolyzed or lipemic. So hemolysis, um, lysis, means literally just the destruction or rupture of red blood cells. So hemolysis will appear as a thicker kind of pink, milky kind of texture. And it'll be much thicker on the top. It won't be liquid like a regular serum would be. It also... Um, when you're running this, when you're running a hemolyzed sample of serum, it's going to really elevate the potassium level in the test results and going to cause an inaccurate test result. Um, it's, the hemolysis is caused by either a toxin or poison in the bloodstream that can make the sample hemolyzed, or it can be caused from a collection error or technician error in forcing blood through a needle that's too small, which will cause the cells to rupture if they don't fit or um, shaking the sample, particularly in an EDTA tube, when you're supposed to mix it gently by just inverting it. If you shake it too vigorously, it will cause the rupture or destruction of the red blood cells, and that will hemolyze the sample also. So the hemolyzed serum comes out pink, kind of milky color, and it looks like that. So you can see in this picture there are all different degrees of hemolysis in these serum samples. And then the last kind of serum that I'm going to just touch on briefly is when it's lipemic. So uh, lipemia is fat in the serum, so if the serum comes out and it'll be very much much thicker and white color, and that is lipemia, and that's just the presence of lipids or fat in the blood. So this doesn't affect the safety of using a blood product if of, of using the blood product if you're needing to use it, um, and it's usually caused by not fasting before a blood draw or a diet that is really high in fatty foods. It causes um, the biggest difference it causes when you run it in a blood test is a displacement of volume in the test results, and it'll have an accurate volume when measuring a lipemic sample because of the thickness and um, incorrect texture that you see in that. So this is what the lipemic sample will look like. You can see it's much thicker on the top of the tube there, and much, um, much less yellow, more white, and actually looks like the texture and color of what you would see in fat. So that's kind of the basic things that we're looking for when we're pulling serum or plasma, and we're looking at hemolysis, the rupture of red blood cells, or uh, lipemia, which is the presence of lipids or fat.